This is Wayne Christian. Welcome to the second part of the interview with my friend Dan Flynn regarding the legislative session and the special session and maybe a little bit more. So uh, welcome to the, back for the second part to the Texas Legislative Update. Dan has been involved in our State Guard and uh, has done a lot of work regarding border security and what's going on the border. So I want Dan to kind of bring us up to date uh, from his experience and knowledge because a lot of us are concerned of what's going on the Texas-Mexican border. Border security is one of the biggest issues faced. You do any polling, you'll find out that the general constituency is more concerned about securing our borders than any other issue. Uh, in my role, I, I have two roles. I'm on Homeland Security and Public Safety and, uh, committees in the House, but I'm also in, very involved in our Texas military forces. I have been deployed and actually worked on the border on a number of occasions. Uh, the uh, Texas-Mexican border is a very dangerous place. Over 30,000 people were killed in the last four years right along our border. Over 3,000 in uh, waters alone. Uh, just think about that. We're, we just last week, as a matter of fact, we had a shootout right there uh, across the, the Rio Grande uh, with our uh, Parks and Wildlife folks and our Texas Rangers. And uh, so it's a very dangerous place. Uh, the uh, Department of Public Safety, on a regular basis, puts out uh, initiatives that says, "Do not go there. It's very dangerous, and and you need to watch what you're doing." Why is it so dangerous? The drug cartel, the, drug, the Mexican drug cartels, are in a big fight. Uh, and, and really that's where the big battle is, is they want the corridors and they want to control them. Uh, the uh, Mexican president, Felipe Corron, has done a very good job. In fact, he's the pers first uh, Mexican president to really address the problems, and, and I, I appreciate that greatly. But on the other hand, they, uh, they've never operated under the rule of law. And as I've talked to some of the Mexican um, officials, uh, cabinet members of the president, uh, that's the one thing that they're working towards, and they feel very comfortable that for the first time in the history of Mexico, they're actually establishing a rule of law. And uh, so we have uh, the uh, Texas military forces along with the uh, uh, DPS, the uh, Texas Parks and Wildlife, local law enforcement. We're actually uh, slowing down illegal traffic coming into the United States, in some places as much as 65 percent. It's continues to be the Mexican drug lords that are creating the major problems. And, uh, and we, uh, you know, uh, until the federal government recognizes there's a problem. I know when we uh, visited with uh, Janet Napolitano, uh, she was talking about how safe and secure it was. Well, my question to her was, what border were you on? Dan, one of the issues that our voters demanded was to do something about sanctuary cities. Yes. There are certain cities in the state of Texas that completely refuse to arrest investigate, do anything about illegal criminals uh, that are in this, uh, this state. And they still sit here and take our state dollars and operate and snub their nose at uh, the law of the land. All, well, you, all, you ha that? all you have to do is look at our criminal justice system and you see how full it is of illegals. What happens when it is a demand that we're wanting to address that issue? Well, uh, in the House, uh, the bill passed, but it's set in the committee for weeks. The Senate passed it, we passed one, and, and they never got them together. And, uh, and it really was uh, very disappointing to me because such an important issue to all of our constituents that we address border security and the sanctuary city is high on their list of things that they want to do. Unfortunately, some of our chief of police are the ones that we're having to fight on trying to pass this out of uh, uh, the legislature. And uh, I think until the, uh, the people really stand up. The big cities are where we're having the problem. Of course, that's where the sanctuary cities are. That's where the crime is. And it spills over into our rural areas, and it hurts us from a, a job standpoint. Uh, we're, uh, we're sitting here with uh, a lot of the Chamber of Commerce believing that we have to have these people to be able to, to do certain jobs. I, I'm under the impression that if we're out there and we have jobs available to people, we'll find people that'll come and work. Because unemployment is high as it is, we're going to want Americans to be taking those jobs. Dan, you know, there, there's always good and bad in everything. Right. And this session we had a supermajority of Republicans. Uh, the voters sent a supermajority of what they deem more, I think, as conservatives than Republicans. 
I think Independence Tea Party. You and I drove some seven thousand miles. That's we, right. We sure did. We, we all over tea Texas. Party all over Texas. You and I during the mm-hmm. interim, just trying to encourage people to get out and vote, and and not because of, I'm sure it's because of you and I. Uh, they all came out and we, we had the great victory. But we did. We drove about seven. Well, maybe in spite of us. Spite, huh? That was it. You know. <laughs> but we talked to tea parties, uh, Republican clubs. Uh, all all venues of people, independent uh, groups all over the state of Texas, and they came out and voted, sent they a super did. majority. And a lot of people ask me, well, Wayne, what do you think about the session, how it represented? And, and really, in my opinion, I've had some friends of ours state it this way, that if you're talking about just a regular majority of about 80-something Republicans like we had last session, right. it was an excellent A-plus session yeah. of conservatives. Yeah. But for a super majority... I think we really didn't accomplish everything we should have as a supermajority. I think yeah. it was inadequate session for a supermajority to excuse. Let's talk a little bit about some of the things that good, bad, and ugly of this session. Okay. There's, no, there's no question we had some great victories. We really did. We did balance the budget without raising taxes. Uh, we did get a voter ID bill out. Uh, we did incredible things for pro-life issues. Very proud of that. Yeah, that, that is remarkable. The yes. That yes. was the most historic pro-life legislative session. We basically defunded the abortion clinics in the state of Texas. That's correct. That's it, correct. That's and, and, and that, to me, is one of the major yes. victories of this session. Uh, a little bit of disappointment. We didn't get uh, our, our Second Amendment rights. We didn't get the Tenth Amendment rights. Uh, we, we, and those are all big issues that passed in the House. Uh, the Dodd-Frank bill, which was the Financial Reform yeah. Act, uh, which is devastating to yes. our community banks, uh, passed it overwhelmingly, unanimous in the House. It never had a hearing in the Senate. Same way with the 10th Amendment. Passed unanimous, never had a hearing. Those are, those are very important things. Uh, and, and I think that if you just sit down and start clicking off the, the issues that were important to people, as we saw and heard traveling around the state of Texas, those were big issues to people. They were, and I think, you know, of course we have great friends at the Senate, but let me tell you, uh, the people need to take a review of that. That's right. They need to review and say, That's hey, right. the Senate was fairly, was pretty arrogant to the voters. On issues, when you get the House sitting by a supermajority, the votes on those issues you've named, and they go in and pass on the last day of the special session and just kind of thumb their noses and shut the doors and say, take it or leave it. Yeah. That's an arrogance of an aristocracy that I really find insulting to us and the, the electorate out here. And, and, and that's kind of where we're, we're stuck on this TSA bill, this groping bill. That's right. Which I'm, I'm telling you what, that is, that is uh, disgusting. Of what we're having to do we at our airports, one hundred percent out of that's the right. Texas House, that's exactly and the right. Senate uh, sat on it, and like they never sent it back. And when they sent it back again, that's when they said, "We'll take it like we wrote it, or forget it." Yeah, that's exactly what, and what's happened. Fail. And 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 now we're going to have to have a super uh, majority, one hundred and twenty votes, to be able to get it. And and uh, I I don't see us being able and to get that frankly, today. Frankly, a couple of our top politicians mouthed off, yes, and uh, insulted uh, a lot of people and have really raised the bar of opposition. It lost that. us some votes in it the House. Lost, well, we, we, yeah. we passed it by yeah. 100% no vote against it. Yeah. Now it will probably fail today. And this is not a, it's not a political issue. It's a moral issue that I shouldn't have to worry about going to the airport with my 85 or 90-year-old grandmother and having her be frisked. That's right. And, and, and humiliated with having to even change their 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 diaper it's, uh, it, it's crazy and then to uh, you know take young children in there and 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 watch them be handled manhandled and uh, here we you know we teach our young girls don't let anybody touch you and here it's happening right there by government employees it's it's not as much a political issue as it truly is a moral issue but the political it part be, of it too is that's I think, like what's playing the problem it's yeah. just about time we told the federal government, that's, not in Texas. That's exactly right. And so it, 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 there's a lot of different issues to get the motions high yeah. and for the Senate to snub their nose at us and for a couple of politicians to mouth off and very disappointing. that is very disappointing. Very, very disappointing. And uh, those are issues that, that uh, are not going to go away because uh, the American people, Texans particularly, are not going to enjoy having anybody uh, manhandle them when they go to the airport. You know, another thing that disappointed me was the State Board of Education. Yeah. And, and you and I, by the way, you and I brag on us again. Uh, what's sad is, as Republicans, we were the only two for the last two years have gone down right. to the State Board in Houston where they met. And we had great victories, Dan. Kind of explain very quickly, because we talked about this before. Uh, we've had some uh, uh, some good friends here. Charles was on here. Yes. Great school board members, great patriot. And he's probably not going to be in office. 
uh, yeah. Char- Charlie Garza yes. talking about stable yes. education because of the redistricting amount. And 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 I and I was not a part of that, but it's my understanding that the uh, members of the state board of education were not even really uh, considered in way they felt like that the districts should be drawn. That's, That's right. the same way with the Texas House. Uh, were you asked how you would like your district to I be done? I never saw my map at all. I was asked the day they came out with the map, yeah. would I like to sign off and give approval to it? I said, what? He said, your map. I said, I haven't seen the map. Well, are you going to sign off on it? I'm saying, well, hey, we weren't seeing it. Now, let me tell you uh, what happened to us, Dan, and you and I worked very closely. Yes. You and I had to hire attorneys to defend yes. Yes, we the did. folks of East Texas. Yes. And what they did is we drew an opposition map. Yes. Because they were they were literally stripping many of the communities of interest in deep east Texas that I believe would have fit with the big oh, statewide map, it, it, and and I'm very disappointed because I you know I end up getting paired with someone that I helped get elected. Wasn't it amazing? Wasn't there a hearing that Brian Hughes said that he was called by some leadership person and said they were going to use m- matching you and Kane because they were uh, punishing those that didn't vote for the speaker's leadership team? Uh, didn't that happen during the interim and? Then they said, "No, we would never do that." But yes, I heard that same rumor, and unfortunately, I am being paired with. That's uh, right. Mr. Exactly Kane. what they said yeah. was not going to happen. Did yeah. happen. Yeah. So yes, the map in East Texas, but I understand it's under challenge now. That's right. Uh, and so all of the people that we've sent the maps to that have my new district going up north to some fine people in that direction, but take part of George Lavender's map and of uh, Brian Hughes's uh, district and my old district, giving my district away. That may happen or may not happen now, I understand. My new district is drawn like a big C. I'm assuming that stands for conservative. I'm not sure. <laughs> but it, but anyway, I'm, I'm going to have to drive through other districts to get to the other part of my district. But they're trying to remove conservatives in deep east Texas is what they're doing. That's exactly seems to be. Well, and some of us felt like we did have targets on our back. Yes. And, and, and that's unfortunate because I feel like that if you had, you know, if we'd had an opportunity to have input, yeah. Uh, we drew a map. I was told by uh, one of the map writers that it was impossible to have an East Texas uh, map mm-hmm. without pairing people. Uh, in less than two hours, my staff and I, we drew one. Right. We drew two. We gave it to them, and uh, they were not considered, and that's, that's right. disappointing. But let, let, me, let me kind of make clear now. The, the maps are being challenged. I right. understand the Hispanic Caucus, the Black Caucus, and the Democrat Caucus all are filing lawsuits on these. So for all the people who said, well, here's the map 150 that the House passed, that's the way it's going to be. We literally will not know if we're running in our current district, the one the House map drew, or some new district the court draws until about what October or November. It might it might well be in November. In fact, is you know it's happened in the past where you actually have to run and then rerun. That's right, run in our current districts, come back next session and draw it in. That's how it happened last time when the Democrats went to Ardmore. Yes, yes, they did leave town. (laughs) Yeah. The other thing, and and one thing I want to mention because it's really disappointing to me. I don't think we, we really got our Second Amendment rights really addressed in this session. Uh, there were several things that the NRA and the uh, TSRA really needed and wanted. They felt like it was important, and uh, unfortunately, they, they were not addressed. And uh, that's always disappointing when there are people that, you know, Second Amendment is one of the most sacred rights there is in Texas. And uh, to not be able to move that forward for them uh, is another disappointment. You know, something that troubled me severely during the session, you and I drove 7,000 miles. We did town hall meetings with a group that we helped reorganize, the Texas Conservative Coalition. Correct. And uh, you and I were a group of about 28 folks that reorganized yes. the Conservative Coalition a couple of sessions ago. Very effective last session. It really was. And we started doing town hall meetings that you and I, mm-hmm. I think, will claim authorship on this, <laughs> town hall meetings, and went across during the interim visiting with people like i mentioned already seven thousand miles you and i went this past interim and i think it brought people to understanding that there are people in the legislature that actually do yes, understand yes. agree and share that message yes, yes and and the attendance at those town hall meetings were always extraordinary it just it amazed and enthusiastic, me enthusiastic yes and and we had them everywhere from greenville to i don't know did we ever do one at tenner hall we did in nacogdoches, we, did. <laughs> nacogdoches. Hey, we, we, we had also some huge ones in Dallas with Judge Napolitano, yes. Fox News came down, and Houston, we did one there with him. Yes. And, uh, it was a, there were some exciting events. There were. And also... The we, governor joined us in those. The governor joined us in those, signed our mm-hmm. pledge to Texas right. for our, our right. issues. Uh, the other thing being the pledge with Texas, which the governor signed, uh, Susan Combs, I believe, signed. Yes, right. Uh, and Jerry people, Patterson signed it. Jerry Patterson signed it. We had it at the uh, uh, state Republican convention, and I mean... Everybody wanted to sign it. That's right. Uh, some of them didn't really qualify under the the rules that we had 
for being a member of the Texas Conservative Coalition, but boy, they were, I mean, they were begging you to be members. That's right. And, and what I have to do to be a member of it. And that's accountability. That's right. We started exposing where legislators stood, not necessarily by saying, hey, this guy did bad, but because their name wasn't there supporting that's right. the conservative agenda, all of a sudden their voters started saying, why is my guy that's not right. a member? That's right. And, and we were asked that at all of our town hall meetings. And anyhow, we thought it was very effective. I also met with some uh, organizations that agreed to furnish a team of attorneys for yes, us yes. Uh, to combat the trial lawyers right. and scrub bills and keep it uh, keep our legislation uh, as uh, efficient and tight and legally uh, clean as possible. And that helps tremendously. We've never had that in a session. Also, these YouTube that people have watched during the session, right. uh, we had ready to go that TCC would have been the sponsor on this. Yes, you know what? You and you brought up a great point. The, when uh, when we are we get out and work hard, we spend a lot of money. We elect good, strong, conservative people to come in there, and 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 then we don't give them the tool that they really need to have to combat what the trial lawyers are doing. That's right. And and so it's remarkable that we did pass that loser pay. Yeah. It's remarkable that we were able to do a lot of the things that that I think were important and will be very beneficial to the people of Texas. But uh, the Texas Conservative Coalition. An incredible organization that uh, uh, we all were members of, and during this session, it was really not effective. Well, what and that happened? Concerned what, me. what disciplined happened? All those plans that you and I and many others had worked on came here. We were going to have a great organization had increased the membership to 76, I think, members. That's right. And that was before we added the new supermajority of new elected, about 40 plus new representatives that were coming in. Yeah. So yeah. it was going to be a tremendous team, but some in leadership decided with a supermajority of Republicans we did not need the Texas Conservative Coalition. Only the con Republican uh, Caucus. That's all we needed. Yeah. And because of that, there was active a uh, move to uh, get rid of some of us, mm -hmm. uh, to, to fire me, to uh, uh, change the leadership, and basically we they, sh they were successful in shutting down a lot of the work that yeah. we could have accomplished, I believe, no as a conservative coalition. And yeah. uh, that's something that I think the voters had supported out here across the state. And I'm really concerned we need to revamp that and uh, look back. I, I'll, that will be, that'll be a, a prime uh, item that I'll be working on during the interim. I think it's very important. The voters like it. Uh, they like to know that there is a group of conservatives that are going to stand up. A, a little issue, like uh, Sharia law, that's coming into effect that's scaring me to death. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there are people that want Sharia law to override our judicial system right now. Uh, that'll be a good issue for us to work on with the TCC. Uh, this is Wayne Christian and Dan Flynn with the Texas Legislative Update. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being with us during the session and during this special session. And hope to be visiting with you during the interim.